Hey there guys, today is gonna to be a really quick and easy project. I'm in the process of upgrading my rainwater harvesting wildlife water on the backside of my property. I think I've done a couple of videos on it and I'm adding a couple of IBC totes to it to increase the amount of water storage I have uh, so I can go longer durations in between rains uh, for the deer and all the other animals that use it. And I figured it'd be a good opportunity to show you how I paint the IBC totes because I get that question quite often and a lot of people want to know if they can paint them, if there's a type of paint, or if they should do the black plastic wrap uh, like a lot of other people do. Well, obviously I prefer to paint it. I just think it's easier. I think it looks good. Uh, may not last as long as the uh, wrapping it in plastic, but I think it is a good alternative assuming you use the correct paint. And uh, let me show you. Here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a drill or driver that has a T30 sized star bit. You can also use a hand driver but this star bit is going to be used to take these top brackets out so that you can remove the tote, which I'll show you in just a second. And then you're gonna need four to six cans of a plastic friendly paint like this. This is a Rust-Oleum camouflage uh, brand of paint, but you can use probably any plastic friendly paint. I just happen to like the khaki color for our desert environment. And also because I use these near wildlife water and I kind of want everything to look as natural as possible. Possible. And that's pretty much it. Um, I have painted one of these with about four cans on a totally windless day. Uh, but if you get any wind or breezes like that, uh, you'll probably need closer to six. So six is what I have. So now I'm going to take this out and uh, maybe talk a little bit about prepping and cleaning and then we'll paint it. Now that I've got the plastic removed from the metal cage, it's now time to prep the plastic for paint. And for the most part, all I'm gonna be doing is just washing with a little bit of soap and water, and that's all I'm gonna do. But if you wanted to take it a step further to ensure a butter bond for the paint, you could certainly use a plastic primer or even go over all of this plastic with a very fine grit sandpaper, and that would probably ensure a little bit better bond but I have used this technique for a few years with this paint and I've had pretty good results. So I'm not gonna be doing anything more than soap and water, but if you want a higher bond, definitely do the other things as well. I've used four cans total so far and it appears that I've got pretty good coverage on this tote but looks can definitely be deceiving when you have changing light and you're using spray paint. So what I like to do on these totes is go to the opposite side that the light's hitting and I look for thin areas. I don't know if you can see, um, it almost looks like horizontal stripes but uh, definitely there's a lot of areas that I need to cover 
and uh, whenever I'm painting with uh, the especially Rust-Oleum paints I like to get everything coated in about an hour and I think I'm about 50 55 minutes right now so I'm gonna grab a fifth can of paint and just go over lightly everything and uh, then I'll check it in uh, another day before I put it back in the cage Well, it's been about four days since I started painting the IBC tote on the left. And as you can see, I went ahead and painted another one. So the addition of both of these totes will give my wildlife water setup approximately 900 gallons in total capacity, which will be awesome. It'll keep me from uh, having to haul water down there uh, during the uh, longer dry periods. So hopefully I will never have to haul water. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that I didn't talk about earlier is the importance of letting the paint cure on these, on the plastic portions of these totes before you put them back in the cages. This one I waited about two and a half days and when I put it back in the cage, it went in just perfectly. But the second one I painted, I only waited about seven hours. Um, and you can see down here that it got kind of scratched up when I slid it back in the cage. So anyway, just make sure you wait the full time for it to cure. I'll show you the corner on this one. So this is the one I waited the appropriate amount of time on. And you can see there's no scratches. Uh, the paint's pretty durable. Just make sure you wait that time period, uh, you know, to let it cure before you start putting it back in the cage. So I'm going to get my daughter right now and we're going to go take these down to the water setup down there. Excuse all the trash and, uh, and then I'll let you guys go. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this video. I hope it was interesting and perhaps gave you some ideas in case you happen to be planning some sort of rain rotor harvesting project in the future and you might be wanting to use an IBC tote. I think they are a perfect step up from your garden variety rain barrel and allow you to store a substantial amount of water in a relatively uh, tight space. And as you can see me moving around, uh, once they're empty they're pretty easy to move around. You can put them in a backyard, side yard, or in your garage. Um, so you would have water for a garden or perhaps emergencies as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to paint them. I just prefer to paint them. Some people wrap them in a black plastic and it probably is very durable or more durable. I just like the look of the paint. Um, as for the second part of this project, that probably won't be the next video as we're supposed to have uh, even higher winds for the, as you can probably hear on the microphone, uh, for the next several days. But that will be in expanding my wildlife water setup. So I'll add the two tanks you saw me paint. I'll do all the PVC piping and then 
I don't know, <laughs> talk about that. And then I'll probably end up setting up some cameras and, and hopefully get some wildlife footage for you guys. So as always, I appreciate you watching. Um, give it a thumbs up if you liked this. And uh, if you are wondering what's behind me, that big old frame, you probably saw it in the last video, that is going to be a playground slash swing set that's going to be attached to my daughter's shipping container playhouse. So, all right, I will see you guys next time. It runs around this tree, makes a bend right here, and then it runs along the back side of the through this elbow, and then runs into the ground. Stores. But essentially, it is just a dish with a float valve. This one has the float valve.